So now let's uh, just define these things. That red curve I just showed there is this Python code here. Ah, not very straight lines here. So it's um, function normal, which you will see in the in the um, in the code distribution for this uh, class, and um, it's also actually built into the Python library. But I happen to use my own trivial one-line definition as a Python function. And if we go to Wikipedia, which we know to be the sort is particularly accurate in areas like this and particularly reliable, it will tell you all about normal distributions. And here I cut and pasted the actual functional definition from Wikipedia. Uh, f of x is 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi times um, is exponential with x minus mu raised to the second power and a minus a half. And that was um, not meant to, we you know, not meant to go forward there, I apologize. Um, next next um, slide here just gives the code that produces that green histogram. And we can probably think about this in a little detail. Here we're generating our million results. As I told you, we had a million people or a million physics exam, physics uh, results. These million results are just numbers between naught and one. So how do we get uh, 40,000 counters out of this? Well, we just divide the region between naught and one into 40,000 parts, each of which is equal size. That's what this thing, this is done here. We convert, we take the unit, the number between naught and one, multiply by 40,000. That gives us a number between naught and uh, um, 40,000, or 40,000 minus a little bit, because we'll never get the value one. And then we make it, make it into an integer, which runs between naught and 39999. And then we increment, that's the place or the result or the answer or the physics final state over the 40,000 possible final states. And we increment the counter corresponding to this uh, place. And so this counter here is the thing that gets histogrammed. And we, we initialize here in Python. We uh, define an array of length 40,000 and initialize it to zero. And we have the value, the, the xy text is the value in points of how much we're displaced from the point for the text. And then we have the actual xy value we're pointing at here. So this produces some text at this position here, given by xy text, uh, with um, an arrow pointing to this position here, given by xy. So here are four annotate commands, which is just useful. You will find that if you try doing this things, you spend you spend longer on doing plots than you do doing arithmetic. So we've so far studied uh, what happens when you have a mean of 25. And with the error, which is almost exactly, but not quite precisely, the square root of 25, or 25. Um, but as we saw in, from looking at the details of the distribution, it is not exactly Gaussian. It's uh, <coughs> too small on the low side and too big on the high, on the high side. And so the Theorem that the distribution is exactly Gaussian, you know, it's an so called asymptotic theorem. It only implies when the number of observation n is large, and 25 is big enough for it to be roughly right, but not big enough for it to be precisely right. So we'll go up to a factor of 10 to 250 as the mean, exactly the same idea, but just multiplying the, uh, the average value per, per um, bin to 250 and multiply it by a factor of 10. This should give us more reliable answers. So here is a similar result. But instead of having um, a million people or a million physics events, we have 10 million. And as still, we only have 40,000 possible answers. So now we have 250 as the um, midpoint. And uh, here's the same normal distribution is now plotted with a mean of 250 and an error which is the square root of 250. And we've also plotted this 1% uh, value 
and 99%, 99% of the, of the events lie below this value here and 1% lie below this value here. So, um, and here is one sigma from the mean and here's one sigma above the mean. So actually this particular green curve fits better the red curve than the previous case and we can see that uh, um, later um, when we actually plot the error bars. And so this uh, slide here goes through this deep, what I just said. We have 10 million events, but still 40,000 categories. Uh, square root of 250 is around 16, a little less than 16. Uh, we run the one sigma line from the, from 250 minus the square root of 250 to 250 plus the square root of 250. We'll see um, later that the plots get rougher when we reduce the number of events, but we want to do a little, a few other things before we discuss that. So we actually just want to show these error bars to show that the fluctuations are reasonable. These are just the square root of the <coughs> the number of events in each of the bins, and you can see that um, the uh, red curve with its error bars is quite consistent with the green curve, essentially wherever it's plotted. Here's this in a little more detail, you know, and showing. Um, Perhaps even too good a agreement between the green curve and the red curve. And this is for this central reason between um, mean minus one sigma and mean plus one sigma. Here's the same thing for the, here's the, here's the one sigma on the top side, and here it just shows even above there, it's, it's still possibly a, there's a slight t tendency for the green to be above the red, but it's not by very much. It was a much bigger effect when we had 25, and that's because 250 is a bigger number than 25. The asymptotic approximations that give you the gas in distribution are better. Um, this just describes how I produce those error bars using matplotlib and the matplotlib command error bar. Um, we, um, we already shown how we got, why we got the, the, um, the red curve, which is y25 was the normal distribution um, times the, um, at the spin centers. And here are the error bars, errors, which is just the square root, because y's are events. And um, we get the error bar by um, taking, plotting it at the center. The ordinate, which is the x-axis, is given by the, the centers of the bins. The y value center is given by the normal distribution. And the error is just the square root of y25. And here we have the other things we want to do. We have a marker, which is an O, a color, which is a black, a size which of the marker, which is five. And I've scribbled over it, but there's also a line width specified in points. And uh, we've already uh, essentially seen this. This tells us how to make the one sigma line on these graphs. And it uses the plot command from um, just a vectors of length two, so this line is just a single line. If you do a plot like you do of the normal distribution, then you have longer vectors and you get a smooth curve. Yes, we're just doing one line. 